Welcome to the She Is Podcast, where we are encouraging and equipping women to be confident in God's promises. I'm Jamie. I'm Sherry. I'm Nicole. We are women in different ages and stages of life. We are active in ministry and are here to have a Bible-based conversation about our identity in Christ. So get ready to be encouraged and equipped as we share with you today. Hello, everyone. Hi. Hello. Welcome, welcome. <laughs> welcome back to She Is Podcast. So we're excited to be back as the three of us again. The three amigos. It seems like it's <laughs> been a long time. Amigas, yeah, sorry. Amigas. Seems Spanish. like it's been a long time, but I'm excited. Jamie is bringing the word today, and she's going to tell us um, tidbits about the story of her twins and how they came into this world and and um, thriving, I think, is mm-hmm. what you'll be talking about because, I mean, that's what be- babies do. Mm-hmm. Is that they're supposed to thrive. And yes. so, so I'm excited to hear what you have for us and what the Lord's placed on your heart today. Um, I don't know how much of the story you'll tell us, but I'm, I'm excited to hear what you have and the way the Lord will just bring that to uh, give us a good word for our heart today. So I'm really excited, Jamie. Thank you. Dear God, we just thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, um, for the word that Jamie has to bring to us today. And God, I just thank you that we were created to bring forth life, not just Mm. as women, but as Christians. You have put that um, inside of our hearts and inside of our our spirits to bring forth your life and, um, and life abundantly, God. And we just thank you for this time. We love you, Jesus. Mm-hmm. Be with us as we um, listen to Jamie and just talk. And yeah, let us have an awesome time. In mm-hmm. Jesus' name, amen. 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 Wow. Nicole. <laughs> <laughs> Nicole wanted to open us up in prayer because she felt she had a, a word to share with that. <laughs> was, yeah. was that it? Yeah, I, it just hit life. me on the way here in the car. I love that. And yeah. Well, <laughs> this is so amazing because I was I was praying on my way here and I was just like, God, I feel like I've got so much to share. Mm-hmm. Please give me just clarity in in how I speak today. Mm-hmm. And I was literally p- praying that. <laughs> and I was driving here and uh, I was stopped at a stoplight and Oh, God. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> stoplights. Well, okay, so at the stoplight, I'm waiting there, and there is a woman that mm. is picking apples off of a tree. Mm. And the tree wasn't in someone's yard. It was like, you know, there was like the sidewalk and then like a little bit of grass and then a fence and then somebody's yard but this this tree was on the other side of the fence it was like accessible to the public right so this gal i could tell she wasn't like the person that lived in that house because she had parked a bicycle on the sidewalk and she had her helmet on it's like she literally stopped her bike and was grabbing a couple apples off this tree and i was like well are those her apples to take? (laughs) I was like, well, they're not inside the fence. And it's like, it just hit me that the fruit that we produce off of our lives Mm -hmm. is to share with others. That's so good. It's to give nourishment to others. (laughs) Yes. And, um, and, and she wasn't, she wasn't stealing Right? Right. right, because it's it's. I mean, those trees—they're on the outside of the fence. They're producing more than the mm-hmm. owners of the house could right could use for themselves. It's it's like this is this is food for passersby, right? Yes. yes. And she was just taking advantage of that mm-hmm. in in a good way. Yes. Um. She wasn't being sneaky. She was just saw the fruit, took what she needed. Yes. And that just spoke to my heart. And I that love it. That just goes right with what Nicole got on the way in. Yes. Um, I love it when the Lord does that. <laughs> yes. So, and that has so much to do with what I wanted to share today. So, um, yeah, just to get started, this has kind of been on on the board for a while, I guess, of, of something that we wanted to discuss is my testimony of having the twins. Yes. So, uh, 
I was really kind of struggling trying to figure out which part of this story to tell because there's a lot to it. Mm. And you girls can please ask me questions yeah. if you have any at all. Because, uh, you know, it's... I, I'm an open book. It's okay. <laughs> right. uh, but, yeah, I really just want to start um, just with being in labor with them, I guess. Mm. So they were due in... Uh, on April 15th. I had them on January 27th. Yes. So wow. it was 11 weeks early. Mm-hmm. And obviously that, that was, that was a struggle. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were not, they were premature. They were very mm-hmm. premature. And uh, they were three pounds each when they were mm-hmm. born. Which is actually, for that gestation, um, very good size. And also the fact that they're twins that were both growing at the same rate was also a a very... um, It's an uncommon thing, really. Mm -hmm. Usually there's one twin that'll be stronger than the other. Uh, They were really um, kind of neck and neck with Mm. um, how they were, you know, how they were formed already. Mm. So we had a journey ahead of us. Mm-hmm. Um, it, you know, if this had happened at any other point in history, mm. they probably would not have survived mm. unless it was a miracle of God. Right. But, you know, you're talking about two three-pound babies mm. that are in incubators because they can't maintain their body temperature Mm -hmm. they are on oxygen because Mm -hmm. they aren't taking in enough oxygen to supply their body with what they need and they were also being fed through tubes you know that went through their nose and down into their tummies yeah Mm -hmm. yeah because they first of all didn't have the muscle coordination Mm -hmm. or that development to nurse yet or drink from a bottle, but their body, their tummies needed to be filled, right? Mm -hmm. So there were so many things that weren't ready Mm -hmm. with these babies when they were born. So um, just to give everyone a a quick update, they are (laughs) fine now. They are amazing. They are 14 years old. Uh, Josh and Grace are, are... um, are miracle babies. Yes. Mm-hmm. And, um, as big as you are, <laughs> they are, they are. My son outgrew me this year. My daughter, you know, well, maybe she'll catch up. We'll right. see. Yeah. She, she used to be taller than her brother, but those days are gone. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but, um, and then we also had a, um, an older daughter as well. So when the twins were born, Lene, she was not quite two. So mm. her birthday is at the end of March. So mm. we, at this point in time, had three kids under the age of two. Yeah. So just Ooh. painting the little picture here. <laughs> um, it was just an amazing thing to see the body of Christ come together mm. to support us yeah. and pray for the twins and just you know, always wishing the best for everybody. And there are so many things about the pregnancy that, that were missed. You know, Mm. I, I didn't get to have a third trimester. Right. I didn't realize. that's true. Yeah. I never thought of that. When I went into the hospital, you know, I, I figured it was going to be a false alarm. They would just you know send me back home and that's not how it happened Mm -hmm. and uh, you know ended up having a c-section I did not want a c-section but you know when you have tiny little three pound babies coming out you just want them to be okay yes so so that happened Um, they left the hospital without me okay (laughs) so yeah we we don't have a neonatal intensive care Mm -hmm. unit in Klamath Falls uh, so they got to go over to Medford. Mm-hmm. I saw, <laughs> I'm going to cry. Mm-hmm. I saw them um, through an incubator. Um, actually, the first time I saw them was from Polaroid pictures that oh. are, um, thank you, Sherry, <laughs> that our uh, pediatrician took because oh. um, she was able to, to see them and she'd snap little um, Polaroid pictures and then brought them in <laughs> so I could see them. And I was just amazed. I was like, oh, they're okay. They're okay because, you know, they look 
like normal babies in these <laughs> yes. Polaroid pictures. And then I see, for reference, I don't think it was there on purpose for reference, but one of those bulb syringes, you know, that sucks the yes. snot out of the little oh, baby's yeah. noses. Mm-hmm. Um, that's That was next to them in the picture. Um, and it was about the size of their head. Oh, oh goodness. So these, they looked Tiny. like normal babies, but they were just miniature. <laughs> <laughs> Tiny. Tiny. Oh, so, oh, golly. So, yeah. So I, I got to see their Polaroid pictures probably an hour or so after they were born. They wheeled them into me in their humongous travel <laughs> incubators. Yeah. So I could see them through the wall of the incubator before they took them oh. away. Yeah. And, um... So and at that point, you hadn't even touched them? No. <laughs> oh, Jamie. <laughs> no. And then, um, so I was in the hospital for a couple days after having them all by myself. <laughs> oh. So, you know, it's it wasn't, it wasn't what I had in mind at no. all. Um, and I knew they were fine. I wasn't, I, I was probably really drugged up still and you know, <laughs> losing sleep. I, I was fine. I was, I kind of. Um, probably had somewhat of a out of body experience looking down at me going this is this is weird this yeah. is not a normal having babies experience and yeah when I left the hospital I yes I had had two babies but I left empty handed because yes. <laughs> they weren't with me right but yeah I got to got to go out and see them so I had them on a Saturday night and then um got discharged um a little early. I think they let me out around noon on Monday. Mm. So I wasn't there in the hospital as long as I think they would have liked me to be, but you know. Yes. Special oh, well. circumstances. Special right? circumstances. <laughs> right. So yeah. I did get to um, head over the hill to Medford. It's about 70 miles from here to go see them and hold them yes. for the very first time a couple days after they were born. Were so, you able to go right in and do that? Or? I was. Yeah, oh. we weren't expecting to. Yeah. Um, so I met up with my husband um, there. My mother-in-law drove me over the hill and, and Jim was already there. Mm-hmm. And um, I don't think he had been in at that point. Uh, maybe he had. I don't know. I was I was somewhere else. Right, right, right. Yes. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I wasn't expecting to get to hold them. But as soon as we went into the NICU, um, they they got us all oh. scrubbed up. We got to do the whole, like, you know, you wash and you hold up your hands and air dry and all that stuff. Like a doctor going into surgery, I was doing that to hold my babies. <laughs> so. Oh, um, precious. Yeah. So that's how this all started. And. And, um, yeah, I was just saying the body of Christ just came together mm. and, you know, I didn't have a baby shower. No, um, there wasn't time. There wasn't time, yeah. <laughs> but we had all that we needed. Oh, and people exactly. just, as it was laid on their hearts, just gave us money mm. and, you know, that's really what we needed. We were living mm-hmm. in two different places at that time mm-hmm. and had a lot of unforeseen expenses and everything was taken care of. We needed a place to stay and that mm-hmm. was taken care yeah. of. Um, we yeah. needed someone to take care of Lene and that was taken care mm-hmm. of. So um, everything was provided for it yeah. just so amazingly. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. It was a long time that they were in the NICU. I believe it was 72 days. Wow. Um, okay. Yeah. So, um, so it would have been the e- equivalent of their gestational yes. time. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. So they will actually, in the NICU, they will, um, they call the babies by their, like, their actual age, but then they have a gestational age. And okay. so that's how, it's basically, like, they're still growing in the womb. But it's just outside, and you can kind of see it happening, right? Oh, right, right, right. <laughs> so, um, so they were released a week before their due date, so at oh. 39 weeks gestation. So Okay. Um, so there's a whole lot of things that, um, that have to happen mm. in the NICU to get them ready to be released, okay. right? Mm-hmm. Um, so there was, um, you know, every, every week... Every weekend we were in church, uh, we were giving updates to our (laughs) church family because everyone's very, very invested in these babies, um, letting them know how things were going. And um, so many times people would say to us that 
they were praying that um, that they would get to be released soon, that they would make um, make it up to like five pounds. Like everyone has this mental idea that. And I think this is how it used to be, mm. that once a baby was five pounds, they were good to be released and go home. But um, we would hear, you know, people say that, and they, they have the best of intentions, yeah. but I'm seeing there's so much more that needs to happen mm. than mm-hmm. just, I, I don't want them out early. Yes. You know, mm. I want them to thrive. Yes. And, and so... What went on at the NICU is not just keeping the babies alive, right? If they would have just kept them alive, Mm -hmm. that would be the least that they could do, right? But Mm -hmm. we want, we need more than that. Newborns need more than that. They need to be putting on weight regularly. Mm -hmm. They were so small that they would measure them not in pounds, not in ounces, but in grams. Wow. wow. And they're wanting to see a certain amount of grams gained every day. Wow. Okay. And they're, they're in that, yeah, they weigh them, I think, a couple times a day. Wow. Okay. Just at, at the same time, so they would mm-hmm. know how, how they are growing. And there's some other things that needed to happen for them to be released. Mm. Um, so they, there wasn't a certain amount of weight gain, the, the five pound thing. That that didn't really matter. I think they were. I want to say they were about five or six pounds ish when they were released, but they're also looking for: um, Are they able to to nurse or bottle feed on mm-hmm. their own? Mm-hmm. Um, that was something that they didn't really get until the last week they were in the NICU. Oh, yeah, wow. they would they would, and it would be so frustrating because I'd be nursing and mm-hmm. and they would just fall asleep, and I could <laughs> not get them to wake up and finish eating, so they'd have to finish their meal through their NG tube, Aww. you know, mm-hmm. through the nose, down into the tummy. Dang it. Dang it. And, <laughs> and I'm like, come on, if you just get this, you can go home. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, they, so they have to be able to, um, to eat, right? Um, if it does get late enough um, and it, everything else is ready, they will, the, the staff will teach you how to feed them through a tube so oh. they can, so you can go home. Okay. Um, but, yeah, like I said, that, they were they were able to get it, so we didn't have to do the the tube Good. feedings at home. Um, something else they need to do is to be able to keep their their uh, body temperature up without help from the incubator. Okay, um, that was probably the first thing that they were able to do. Oh. Um, it was actually so comforting. <laughs> um, you know, we would spend half the week there and half the week here, just taking care of um, our our daughter, and mm-hmm. Jim had to work. Um, And Mm -hmm. so, yeah, so a couple days, I think it was three days a week, we were up in Medford. And one day we show up and they are laying side by side in a little crib. And I'm like, oh, my heart, like they're finally back together. Because up until that point, they were separated, you know, from us and from each other. And just to get to see them. um, Yeah. Yeah. I think they were even sharing a blanket. Like, oh, (laughs) so good for mama's heart. So (laughs) good. Uh, So. Hmm. And another thing they needed to do was to um, to maintain um, adequate oxygen saturation. Mm-hmm. So they were on oxygen the entire time that they were in the NICU. Okay. Um, and actually, my son did come home with oxygen. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sherry remembers them. <laughs> I, I had yeah. to come to church, I think, once or twice with him on oxygen. Twice that she I remember. She says twice. <laughs> that I remember. Yeah, I could be it, wrong. It, one of our first um, checkups after coming back home, they, they checked his levels, and he was fine without it. So, um, But, yeah, so the, the, those are the things that they're looking for for babies to to thrive right mm-hmm. and to be able to be released and and um yeah they're still going to need some monitoring but right. that's what we're looking for um development wise and growth wise to know that these babies are on the track on the right road to being healthy mm-hmm. and thriving babies yes so um they made it through they <laughs> yeah they came yes. home uh, it was the day after easter sunday in 2007 um and yeah never hardly any lasting 
um, effects of being mm. premature. And I say mm. hardly any. The only thing really, I mean, there was developmental delays because they really do look at that gestational age until they're like three years old. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. So they, they walked okay. at like 18 months. They got potty trained at about three years. But basically that that was it. Mm. Um, uh, and then, so there was one more thing. Lost my train of thought there for a second. Mm. I don't know. It'll come back. <laughs> <laughs> it always does. It always <laughs> does. So, oh, yeah. The other the other um, thing, uh, the lasting effect, um, was my son had asthma for... Oh. Um, for couple years and it was it wasn't constant it was just kind of seasonal like whenever he would get a cough or something it would just kind of last a little bit longer Mm. and he'd be wheezing and Mm -hmm. and stuff like that um or if he was just over exerting Mm -hmm. um that would happen but he hasn't had any any asthma symptoms in years now so thank you lord yes (laughs) so that's that's it other than that they are Perfect. Perfect (laughs) little human beings. Yes. You would not know. Mm -hmm. I mean, watching Mm -hmm. them, you would have no idea. Yeah. They're they're so... They amaze me (laughs) so much. And uh, it's, it's so easy... I guess to have move to move on past all that because things are so normal now. But when we look back at pictures Mm. of that time, oh, just it just hits you how. Mm how bad things could have been Mm. right and i i don't they did look bleak at the time Mm. um but i i didn't really know them yet you know like i was i was i was i was in the moment there and i was just wanting them to to survive and to thrive and you know we could figure out the future later yes but let's just make it through this time yeah but you know, when when years go by and then you look back at and you know them, right? Mm-hmm. I yes. I know them now, and I can look back at these yes. t- tiny little babies hooked mm-hmm. up to all these machines. It hits you different. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. So different. So mm-hmm. I'm so glad that um, that that God worked miracles <laughs> yes. in so many ways to make sure mm-hmm. that we are how we are mm-hmm. today. Mm-hmm. Um, but it it just kind of led me to where I want to I guess have our discussion today Mm. and that's about thriving versus Mm. failure to thrive oh so failure to thrive is an actual condition or diagnosis yes um, that's not just in infants and children it can also happen in adults Mm -hmm. and it's a physical condition but I believe it's also a spiritual condition. Absolutely. Yeah, and so you. with that, um, let me just share with you a couple definitions. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Um, so what what is failure to thrive? So it's a, this is according to uh, stanfordchildrens.org. Mm-hmm. Failure to thrive is slow physical development in a baby or child. It's caused by a baby or child not having enough nutrition. Oh. Okay. A child with failure to thrive is at risk for problems such as short height, behavior problems, and developmental delays. So if you look at that in with spiritual eyes, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. if you're not getting enough spiritual nutrition, you can be at risk for problems yes. that mean Gosh, you're not yeah. growing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Behavior problems, developmental mm-hmm. delays. Wow, mm-hmm. that's good. Um, that's here's... Um, I want to talk about adults in a minute, but just um, another uh, another thing about failure to thrive in in children and babies. Um, these are this is also from Stanford. Um, some things that um, cause failure to thrive are um, if the child is not given enough breast milk, formula, or food, Mm. has breastfeeding problems, is not given solid food at an appropriate age, Mm. is not willing to eat enough food, 
vomit food repeatedly, such as from severe gastroesophageal reflux, mm-hmm. and has trouble swallowing, has developmental delays that cause feeding problems. So those are all things that can cause failure to thrive physically in mm-hmm. a baby or a child. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But also carrying over into the spiritual side yes. of of our, our growing spirit man, right? If mm-hmm. we are not taking in enough nourishment, we're not growing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like my my babies in the NICU, if they're not growing, mm-hmm. something's wrong. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Right? And they're always wanting that growth to happen. Mm-hmm. Measuring in grams right (laughs) and even um i was talking to um to sherry about this a couple weeks ago that um they the medical staff at the NICU fought so hard for these babies to maintain weight and not lose weight they actually have these little like beanbag pillows that they would put around them to keep them from moving around just wiggling like babies do because that burns calories Wow. Everything counts. Dude. You've got to put on the weight. And so right? let's, as, as spiritual people, yes. let's take in the nourishment yes. and not let anything go to waste because mm. we must thrive. If mm. we are maintaining the same mm. body weight mm-hmm. spiritually, mm-hmm. we are not thriving. Mm. Wow, that's yeah. good. Because yeah. children... Yeah. Babies need to grow. Every well child visit, you know, they're getting weighed. They're yes. getting measured because the doctors need to know mm-hmm. that this child is growing. And if they're not, they're going to look to the reasons why. Yes. And so if we're not growing mm-hmm. spiritually, mm-hmm. what are the reasons why? And most likely, like failure to thrive in a physical human being, it has to do with what we are taking in. Mm. what is nourishing us Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um so in adults um, i'm just going to share on this real quick uh this is from Mm. griswold sa.com um solid name right (laughs) griswold Griswold. i might need to use that in a book put a pin in that (laughs) Um, So it says, uh, according to the Institute of Medicine, failure to thrive is defined as weight loss of more than 5%, decreased appetite, poor nutrition, and physical inactivity. Mm -hmm. Now that's a a physical description of failure to thrive. Mm -hmm. But think about losing weight spiritually. Are, Are you losing Wow. mass that you used to have mm-hmm. are you losing muscle that you used to have spiritually yeah. wow yeah right failure to thrive mm-hmm. are you do you have a decreased appetite for the things of god mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. or are you hungering for him and thirsting after him right wow. right physical so inactivity mm-hmm. what are you doing for the lord contributing yeah, yeah. right and if right. if there is a deficiency there, mm-hmm. it's possible there's a failure to thrive spiritually. Mm-hmm. Gosh, that's good. That, that reminds me of something. Um, if you don't mind, no, go for it. Um, I was doing a Bible study the beginning of this year, and actually, I did it beginning of last year as well, um, with one of our missionary wives, Tanya Weaver. Uh huh. Um, and. It was on Song of Solomon, and I think we've talked about that before. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But anyways, the speaker said something that really just, like, struck me. And he's like, if you think that the Bible is boring or that you don't need to read the Bible, like, that is a sign that you... It's like life and death. You should be Mm. afraid. (laughs) Like, if you get to that place of where you're not hungry for the Word, there is something wrong. Mm -hmm. And so that just reminded me of what you were saying is failure to thrive. Like, you know, if you don't eat, you're not there's going to come a point where you're not hungry. Yeah. Oh, that's true. But Mm -hmm. if you, you know, if you're eating regularly, like your body is going to be like, okay, I'm hungry again. You need to Mm -hmm. feed me. It's the Mm -hmm. same with the word Mm -hmm. or worship or whatever Mm -hmm. it may be spiritually. If you're not in the word, there will come a time when you're not hungry for it anymore. And that's a scary place to be. Right. Well, the literal definition of having no appetite is anorexia. Mm Mm-hmm. 
That's mm. what that means. Yeah. 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 So I, I was thinking, because mm. the Bible says a lot about food it does. and about our spiritual nutrition. Mm-hmm. Yes. And so um, that's why it's so funny that, you know, when I saw the lady eating the apple <laughs> on my way here and what Nicole prayed, it's just we, we need to be taking in that mm-hmm. nutrition, but mm-hmm. also be growing it ourselves to <laughs> yes. help support other people. Yes. So um, just a couple of scriptures here. Uh, John four thirty four, Jesus said that his food, he says, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to mm-hmm. finish his work. Mm-hmm. So, so that is, Golly. that's your physical activity. Yes. You mm-hmm. do something mm-hmm. for the Lord and it's like, your spiritual food. Mm-hmm. He also said, uh, Matthew 4, 4, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Yes. So that's a, it's a, it's still food, but this isn't doing, it is receiving the words from God. Mm-hmm. And we yeah. do that every time we read our Bibles. Yes. Thank you for tuning in to the She Is podcast by Refuge City Church. We pray that you have been encouraged and equipped in knowing who you are in Christ. If you are wanting to have a personal relationship with Jesus, pray this with me. Dear Jesus, I know that you love me. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Please come into my heart to stay and help me to hear your voice and grow in you. In Jesus' name, amen. We would love to hear from you. Please email us at sheispodcast at refugecity.church. Be sure to subscribe to this podcast to hear more from us every week. Thanks again for tuning in, and remember, until next time, you are called to thrive.